Thank you, choir and Josh, uh, for the worship this morning. Uh, very appropriate song. Actually, the worship. Thank you, Josh. I uh, would like, before we begin, uh, to ask you to pray for a few concerns. Um, pray for Pastor Romy Capuli. Uh, to those of you who know him, uh, he's been in the hospital for... What's that, babe? About a week? A week or so now. Uh, at first, he had some gallbladder issues. He was actually uh, brought down from Baguio as they were celebrating their anniversary, actually. And he was brought down from Baguio and had to have uh, an emergency gallbladder removal. At uh, He's now at St. Luke's in uh, uh, Quezon City, my babe. Quezon City. Uh, and that would have been good, so he went home. But after he went home in less than 24, about an hour, 24 hours, uh, he had to be brought back to St. Luke's uh, and was diagnosed with pancreatitis. And then uh, it seems there's complications coming up left and right. So do pray for him. Of course, Atike, his wife, uh, faithful missionary servants of the Lord working with us here. We were hoping that they would join us for this Saturday's uh, gift giving. Because as you know, their, their ministries are for kids. Uh, they've been ministering to kids all over the world. And they focused on the Philippines. He used to be our youth pastor here and the Sunday school director of our church for many years. So, um, But that looks like it's not going to happen at least. So uh, he hates missing that part. Uh, so do pray for him in his quick recovery. And the doctors would have the, the wisdom from the Lord to do what they need to do. And for the medicines that he's taking to uh, to work the way that they're supposed to work. Uh, speaking of being well, I'd like to welcome Engineer Peralta. Uh, some of you who come into church this morning, you said, man, he looks familiar. Is Duterte Bayan? Or someone? No. Uh, welcome home, sir, after many years. Uh, of course, uh, we miss mommy sitting beside you, but uh, we praise the Lord. I, I walked in the, the parking lot of the school last week and said, Kung sino artista yung sa kotse? You know, see, si engineer pala. So, uh, thank you po. Welcome for, uh, for uh, I'm glad we're, you're going to be here in the holidays with us. Um, pray, pray for all of that. Pray for this week. This week is going to be hectic for all of us. Wednesday is the Christmas cantata, you can't miss that. It's going to be at the Pasig Auditorium. Po. Don't miss that. It will start at 6 p.m. To those of you who go by Filipino time, it starts at 4 p.m. To those of you who really go by Filipino time, it starts at 12 p.m. To those of you who like to take your time, don't leave church. We'll start in a few minutes. Okay. Kasi mo traffic It's kind of traffic going there. Lalo uh, sa bridge. Coming in from... From passing the hospital there. When you go in, there's a traffic there. But it's close to that. So, you know, that's Wednesday and Thursday. Okay? So please don't forget. Also, today and tomorrow is the deadline for, I uh, know, the fundraising for the street kids. Over the last, listen to this, over the last 40-something years, since my dad started his church, we have been distributing... Um, uh, food and gifts and toys and stuff to street kids in the city. Literally in the hundreds of thousands already uh, over the last several years. This Saturday will be that day again. So, again, to the parents, let me help you. as what I'm doing this afternoon. Go through your kids' toy box with them. Bring the toys. Clean it up. Bring it here. If there's a lot, like some of you have done, we'll be glad to pick it up from your house. Okay? So today po, at saka bukas, kailangan natin yung mga toys natin. Some of you want to contribute to the packs. Magkano uh, natin, babe? Parang 120 pesos? Okay, per pack. Our goal uh, is for the kids alone that are ministered to directly by this church through small groups and the like. It's about 300 already, not including satellites. But that's not including the two barangays that will be serving this Saturday. So we need you guys to, to help 
And if you can, volunteer to help us give out stuff. Um, we're expecting about 3,000 kids to show up. Because every year we have about two or 3,000 to show up. Okay? It'll be at the school. It starts at uh, what time, babe? 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so, sa mga magkakontribute po, to those of you are giving towards that, uh, they will go to Divisoria on Tuesday? Tuesday. So, if you're going to be contributing monies to that, um, do that and give it today or tomorrow. Okay? Let us change a, a kid's Christmas. We're giving quite a substantial thing this year from the regular food, uh, rice, and so on that we give. We're giving, um, uh, of course, the toys, slippers, and uh, school supplies. Okay? So, paki uh, po, no? Paki gawin natin. Let's not do charity when we give. I don't believe in charity. Okay? I said charitable stuff. I, I believe in giving. As you already know me to do. Okay. Sabihin, wag tayo magbigay ng mga basura, ng mga tira-tira, just junk stuff, or things you could do with that. Let's be intentional. as what IBC stands for in what we do. Okay. So that's today and tomorrow. So please help us with that. I'll be announcing more of that a little bit later. So please uh, don't forget. Okay. Uh, would you open your Bibles to them? Luke chapter 1. All year, we've been talking about the Missio Dei. The Missio Dei means the mission of God. The mission of God in your life. Okay. The, the, world, the word Missio Dei actually started in the early 20th, not 21st, early 20th century. During a big debate, nagtatalo. Which is really, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. The theologians, as, as usual, were fighting. You know? Dapat bang mag-missionary work? Should they do missionary work or should they not? This is in the early, 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 early days. Natatalo siya dalawa. Should we do mission work or should we not? Should we do mission work or should we not? And finally, a theologian said, sabi niya, well, what is... The Missio Dei for us as a church. And everybody looked at him parang, huh? Because it was a Latin word. Sabi niya, in other words, we're doing so many things in the church. The church is involved in everything, especially in this country. Lahat ng bagay pinapasukan. Right? I mean, there are churches who are political. There are churches who are benevolent. There are churches that are ano pinagagawa. I mean, everything. They do everything. And it's, I'm afraid we've lost the Missy Day. In other words, we've lost what God wants us to do. Sometimes we can do that. During Christmas time, Christmas days, you can get so busy in doing everything and they're good things. But we've not come to ask, Anong pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa akin? What is God Wanting me to do. In the midst of all the stuff that's going on in your life, have you asked God, Lord, okay, eto ko, I'm here, but what do you want me to do? Because if we're just talking about good stuff to do, there's like a million good things to do. Lahat yan okay. I mean, really, you know. I mean, you could, off the top of your head, I don't want to go in. I mean, just do a million things you want to do and do them. But have you ever asked, what, what do you want me to do? In my situation, in this situation, in my life, in what I'm doing, God, am I doing what you want me to do? Done. That's the bottom line. And that's, that's the desire of this entire series, even in this Christmas season. Ano bang gustong ipagawa ni Lord sa akin? What is God doing in my life right now? And then, anong gusto niyang gawin? What does He want to do with me right now? That is a huge question. Ang laki niyan. Ang laki niyan. Bakit, Pastor? 
I don't know about you. No. I just got out of final exams. I had something to do every time. That my wife complains already. You're always busy doing something. And you know what? She was right. None of those things that I wanted to do were bad. Maybe I shouldn't ask. None of them were bad stuff. I didn't wake up and say, you know, I want to steal from the government. I would have to be a congressman to do that. Or a senator. Or in our case, even the president. Lahat ng gusto kong gawin, maganda naman eh. Wala namang masama. You know? I mean, for crying out loud, I had a flat tire and I was doing homework. Okay? I mean, you know, diba? But the question is, what was God wanting me to do? As He catches my attention, what does He want me to do? That's the question. That's the question. Last week, we started talking about Christmas and the Missio Day of God there, following a script. Sabi natin, ano? Everything starts with a script. We base Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, so you should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Today, we're going to talk about listen, follow, and keep. Three responses that will accomplish the mission of God in your life. Let me show you a few things. See if you know these. Okay, you ready? When they come up, imagine your head or remind yourself, what's that about? Let's have the first picture. Remember what that's about? The younger generation, transformers, the older generation, don't even worry about it. You never even thought that went on the movies, but Transformers, it was a movie. Okay. You remember what that's about? The younger generation. Oh, Pastor Lampoyan. Good. You know the story, right? Just look at the picture, you know the script, right? Okay, let's look at the second one. How about uh, this one? Let it go. I mean, all you have to do is listen, and I'm already like, Right? Yes, I had the traumatic experience of having five or six girls, friends of my boys, come to the house and sing this song in a choir in my living room. So, pumasok ko sa kwarto, I put towels under the door and put my big earphones on. And you know what? Man, those girly voices, they penetrate those nice earphones. And those were expensive earphones. Let it go! I mean, man, it's like, you know. So we know what that's about, right? Good, of course, the younger generation. So the old ones. How about this one? Ayan. Bago, bago. Oh, everybody knows that. From young to old, if you don't know this, something is wrong with you. Come here after church. I will pray for you. Because this is span generations. But I promise you, the next poster, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. The next poster, you will know. If you don't know, you need a miracle. Oh, yan. Rodel, para sa iyan, kay Joshua, kay Milton, mga mga lalaking maraming atraso dito, mga mag-asawa, to the men who are in trouble, bring your wife to this movie. She will forgive you for all your trespasses over the last 20 years. I promise. In fact, if you have made mistakes over again, ask her, babe, I want to watch that movie again because I want to take it to heart. Man, you're going to have a good Christmas. Promise, man. Okay? If you can handle it by earphones, secretly put it in one ear, listen to music while your wife watches. Buy her popcorn 
Don't be stingy. Wag kang bumili ng fake na DVD. Don't buy the fake ones when people walk in front of you. Bring her to the theater. We know the story of this one, right? I was held at gunpoint to watch this movie. Right? In other words, everything follows the script. The ending of any movie will be dictated by the script. God wrote a script for my life. As terrible a person as I am. As sinful as I am. As rebellious as I am. Huh? With all the stuff I've done in my life. When I go to bed. God looks at my life. And he looks at me. And he runs his hands through my hair. And dreams about what he could do with me. The object of the whole idea. Is that every day. We write our story. But the script we follow will determine the outcome. Have you ever watched a movie with great anticipation and at the end of the movie you want to throw your shoes at the movie screen? Because they just ruined it. The end of your life in my life will determine the outcome of how we follow the script. The mission day, the mission of God is His script for your life. His script for your job. His script for your business. His script for your sickness. His script for your marriage. His script for how you talk with people. How you relate to your children. There is a script in your greatest triumphs and tragedies, meron script tayong susundan. Follow a script and you can change your story. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 29, we know the story of Mary. Everybody does. And here, verse 26 to 29, the angel appears to Mary. And she says, you're going to have a child. She's single. She's a virgin. Okay. Right. And the angel tells her, this is what's going to happen. Have you ever been through a situation like that? Where God puts you in a position and you say, Lord, are you sure that's what you want to happen? Have you ever gotten yourself in a place in your life na sabi mo, hala, what did I do? Are you in a situation today where you say, God, what are you doing in my life? Why am I here? We had it all planned out. What do you do? First thing you need to do is this, listen. In times of testing, listen. Some of you are going to have a not so good Christmas. Ngayon pa lang, hindi maganda. I have a professor who I know will materially, their family will not have good Christmas because their family business and their house was one of the ones that burnt down last week in Quiapo. So they lost everything. Their business is, uh, has been going on for more than 20 years. And they lost everything from the building itself to the machines. Every single thing. They lost checks that were written to them. Checks they wrote. Records they have. Financial records. Everything. Zero. Zero. I'm not talking about just my professor, their entire family it was a family business. Lost everything. Last week, they started to buy machineries so they could rebuild 
their business, but they still don't have a place. They own the lot, but it's still a mess. If you ever go to Quiapo or near Quiapo, near the recto fire, that's where it's at. Magulo pa rin ngayon. It's still a mess. 1,000 families. 1,000 families lost everything there. And they were legitimate. Legit po sila. But the fire did start with them. Some of you are going to have a similar Christmas. Some of you are going to have a sick Christmas. Some of you are going to have a really good, incredible Christmas. But it doesn't change. The mission of God doesn't change for you. The mission of God doesn't change for you. Some of you are going to have an incredibly healing Christmas. Like some of my friends who have been healed. Miraculously healed. But in times of all of this, listen. While it, it may not clarify everything, no? in your future, but it will give you God's present perspective. Listening to God, sometimes we, we make a mistake. Pag nakikinig tayo sa Panginoon, nakala natin, God's going to tell us everything we want to know. Right? You know, <clears throat> next year is my 25th year in ministry, and I praise God that He did tell me everything I want to know. Maganda din pala yung hindi mo alam lahat ng paparating. No? I'm glad God did say yes to everything I asked for. No? Maring hindi mo malaman kung ano yung lahat ngayon, pero maitidihan mo kung anong ginagawa niya ngayon. Hmm? Look at verse 29. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. And the answer of, Mary, of the angel is, don't be afraid. That's all she got. You have favor with God, don't be afraid. A new favor with God, that means you're a part of the plan of God, don't be afraid. If you're following God's mission for you, don't be afraid. Okay? Sometimes in the translations, we, um, we get confused because it's English. But if you look at the Greek, when it says, don't be afraid, it's not forbidding you to be scared. Kasi pag sinabi mo, huwag ka matakot, kuminsan feeling natin, pinagbabawalan tayo ng Panginoon matakot. Okay? God's not saying hmm, you're not allowed to be scared. God is not saying you're not allowed to ask questions. God never said that. God's not saying you're not allowed to ask Him for questions or to be unsure or to be fearful. If you look at the Greek when He says, don't be afraid, what He's really saying is, Take your confidence, place it on me. Parang bata, most of you who have had small kids, who have still small kids like myself. I have five boys and one grandchild who is a boy. You know what they do when they bug each other? Pray for Noah. He's the bug. Hindi po siya yung kinukulit. Siya yung nangungulit. Okay, yung maliit, yung maliit. Okay? I mean, you know, he, he can bug his brothers into purgatory. I'm serious. Grabe yun. Pag, pag napagtripan ka niya, and he can do it with a straight face. No. Nagmana sa nanay niya. Do it a straight face. Pray for him. Nga, Pag na sobrang nakulit tayo mga kapatid, they will go after him. And he will run for fear of his life 
And what will he do? He will hug one of my legs. Daddy oh, daddy oh. He'll start pointing to keep, so that I will keep his brothers from murdering him or selling him to slavery like Joseph. Right? When you're afraid, you, you hold on. Now my kids grew up with dogs. Big dogs. Okay? At one point, I had a hundred pound, pound no, pit bull. So they grew up with big dogs. Okay? The only problem is, my boys are scared of cats. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Because they're dog kids. One time, a cat done. See, Franklin, wah! And the cat just looks at him like, yes. And you my cat, the dogs, But cats, you know, you could throw a rock and they'll just go, yes, you know. And, and he goes, wah! And the cat just, walang pakailam yung pusa eh. No? And then the cat gives him a stare. You, I will scratch you to death. You know what he does? He goes to me and he holds my hand. And what does he do? He goes, ah! That's the same thing over again. Now with a different confidence. Why? Because he's holding my hand. When you have question in your life, like Mary, listen. God doesn't say you're not allowed to fear. You're not allowed to be scared. You're not allowed to do anything else. But what God is saying is, put your confidence in my hand so you can do it. Okay? Learn to listen. Second, learn to follow. Look at verse 34. I put the bottom, you can see it behind me here. And Mary asked the angel, but how could this happen? I'm a virgin. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. So verse 38. After the angel explains to her, what does, what does he say? I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And the angel left her. Follow. 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 James chapter 2 verse 26. Famous verse. It says, For faith without works is dead. It is not referring to your salvation. Okay? That means what God has told you to do, you actually need to do them. The only way to see God's mission at work in your life is by actually following. Following what He says. What's God telling you? Where are you at today? We're all different. In this whole auditorium, everybody has a script. Kanya kanya tayo. I mean, you could be sick beside your wife and your kids, but everybody has a script, and God deals with us all differently. Magkakaiba. Talaga, Pastor? Pero magkasawa kami. Oh, pero magkaiba kayo. It's different. God deals with my wife a different than He deals with me. Huh? But if I'm going to follow and see God's plan for me, I have to follow. I have to follow. I have to learn to follow. I actually have to put feet to my faith. To some of you, uh, that means God is telling you, hey, in your job, you're busy. Give room for me. Some of you, God's asking you to lead a small group. That's a big act of faith on your part. Huge shan. Bakit pastor? Well, you're shy. Some of you, God's asking you to commit to ministry. Some of you, God's asking you to, to talk to someone about the Lord. Some of you, God's asking you to do certain things. Some of you, maybe God's asking you to, to participate in the first fruit of January 24. You say, God, I don't know how that's going to happen. Some of you, God's asking you to be to be faithful in certain areas. Well, if you're going to see that, if you're going to see that happen, 
from large to small, each one is given a mission. Each one is given a mission. Don't dictate that mission. I remember a few years ago, my wife and I, after many, many, many years, went to the States and uh, went back to the States after about, what, 13 or 15 years. And our mission, we thought, was to take care of my ailing mother-in-law. You all know that. So we went there in less than 24 hours. I had so, I've had so many invitations to preach all over, the, all over the states from friends to conferences and the like. And um, it's weird because I don't like going to the states. You know, I, I like it here. No, love ministry here. I can't do the casual stuff over there. And besides, they have all the big shots there already. You know, what would I do over there? Anyway, so we went there. Iba alaga alang namin yung mother in na was becoming very weak because of cancer. And in about less than 24 hours, she was on her way home. To be with the Lord. Now I have two months of black space. Gusto ko na umuwi sa Pilipinas. I only had two speaking engagements because I wasn't intending to preach or to do conferences there. Dalawa lang. But it wasn't until one month after we got there and then another one. So I couldn't just go home. So I said, Lord, ano to? And of course, as expected, I began to have invitations because in less than a, a day or so, my mother-in-law went home to be with the Lord. In about a week, we, bar- we cremated and now I have Two months of nothing. And two months of I didn't want to do anything. Kasi ayoko na mag-preach doon. You know, I, I, my heart is in the Philippines and I don't want to preach over there. Kahit ang dami kong invitasyon, wala akong paki. But I'm like, so I was just ready to go to church. And all of a sudden, calls started to flood in. And before I know it, the uh, eight weeks, eight weeks that I'm supposed to be there ended up with me preaching over 20 times in eight, in eight weeks. But each and every time, I said, Lord, I have nothing to say to the American congregation. Panginoon, wala po akong gusto sabihin. Mas maganda sa Tagalog, eh, no? Wala po akong gusto sabihin sa simbahan ng mga puti. At wala din po akong gusto sabihin sa simbahan ng mga Pilipinong puti. I have nothing to say to the Americans. I have nothing to say to the Filipino Americans. They have all the great preachers there. Let them listen to them. Masyado akong makahinga ng luna ata eh. Oh, Andres Bonifacio. Definitely not Aguinaldo. You know? But God kept putting it up there. I was like, okay Lord, I open the door, I do it. So I, I, I did, sa totoo lang, sa to, honestly, ah, you know how I am, reluctantly, I would literally battle with the Lord. Lord, I could be doing this in the Philippines. Doon na lang po ako. But I could go home early kasi nga, I had those two engagements. 
So I, I found myself preaching and speaking to a small group of people, to literally a couple of thousand people. It became clear to me that regardless of my intentions, God has His own mission. Naiintindihan niyo ba yun? Kahit ano pong intention mo at intention ko na maganda na gusto natin gawin, ang Diyos po may sariling misyon na pinapagawa sa atin. That mission could be your husband who is away from the Lord. That mission could be your wife who is away from the Lord. That mission could be your child or children who is reaching for the Lord. That could be the promotion you got in your job. That could be the sickness that you have because God wants to use it. That could be huh, the losses you suffered because of what God wants to do with those losses. It could be the gains that you got. Either way, either way, follow. Follow. Because the only way Pastor James will ever see the plan of God happen in my life is not until I follow. If I don't follow, I don't see it. I find a different result. That's just the way it works. Pastor, I, haven't you asked? Could there be a better way? No! Bakit? If that's God's way, it's, it's going to be the best way. Can you see it? Not right now. But do you want to see it? Yes? Then follow. Wala, kay saan ka umikot dun yun eh. Kay saan ka umikot? Walang ikutan. Ha? Wala po tayong plan B. Ha? Tama? I mean, oh, mga kalalakihan, pag may problema ka sa asawa mo, ligawan mo. Pastor, ayaw ko pansinin. Sinagot ka na niyan minsan. Sasagotin ka niya ulit. Baka ka lang abuti ka mas matagal. You might have to watch this movie about 10 times. But it doesn't matter. Bakit, Pastor? That's God's mission. You, you made decisions about your job and your business. How to do family. That's God's mission. Follow it. But, Pastor, everybody else is progressing. My friend, they bought a new house. Did they tell you that when they bought the house, it came with a debt? Bago nga bahay mo, matagal ka ng patay, hindi pa bayad yan. Hindi naman na binili, inutang po ang tawag dyan. Naloloko yung iba sa atin eh. Tama ba? Hindi po yung binili, inutang yan. Okay? Tama? But pastor, this guy's getting promoted or they have so much more. That's what happens when we look at everybody else. But that's a different script. What if I joined all those four movies and created one movie? Transformers, Frozen, Star Wars, Second Chance. That means, no yung beat the Second Chance. Sinion? I don't even know who those people are. Napalon? Napalon laki? Si John Lloyd. Dapit pagkatapos si John Lloyd, mag head to head sa yung babae, pag pinagsama sa my script. Ganun yan? Sasabihin niya ganun? Elsa, let's build a snowman! Did that means that I will be here ang team ng second chance. Let it go.
Wala pong ikot yan eh. It's the same script. It is that script. Learn to follow. Lastly, keep chapter 2, verse 19. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. This is after she had given birth. We look, we look at the Christmas story as one big story, right? There's the story of Mary and Joseph and then the, the, the three wise men happen. If you're in the Philippines, they're the three, three kings. Bible doesn't say they're kings. If you're Spanish, they're the three priests. Gomez, Burgess, Samoria. Tama. If you're from our church, it would be Paul, Eric, and Go. If you're an older member of our church, it would be Dudes and Joe, you know, and Dennis. <laughs> it would be a different story. Right? The story of Herod. We take all these stories and we make it to one big Christmas story. It's not. They don't even know it's a Christmas story. Only we know it's a story. That's why there's an ending. But it's not just a story. It's not a real story with them. It's one script at a time. Kanya kanya kwento na pinagsama sama under Jesus. That's like this church. Kanya kanya tayong kwento, but we all come under one Savior, Jesus. We all come under one Savior, Jesus. No. When God gives you a mission, keep it. As the mission unfolds, keep it, protect it, conserve it until its fullness. Keep going until it's done. You were born for this. There will come a day for all of them. Bakit, Pastor? Can I tell you this? The promise of Mary, you would think tapos na. Nanganak na siya Right? At this point in chapter 2, of verse 19, she'd already given birth. Jesus is there. Right? The shepherds come. So everything that she said, we're already fulfilled, correct? No. Because that wasn't the rest of the story. Bakit, Pastor? Because in Luke chapter 1, it says he will be great. He will be this, 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 this. Dami When? When did the story? When did the story? Huh? When did the story? Of Mary come to fruition. Did you know? Not until after, not until, listen, after the Pentecost. Why? Because Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit to continue my work. So, in po natupad, yung plano ng Dios tuloy tuloy. I got the Pentecost. How long was that, Pastor? More than 33 years. Because the problem with us is we keep the story to one movie. We start at the time she was pregnant and the Christmas story ends. And they all lived happily ever after. Ganon eh. Mga kapatid, tatlong dekada po bago natupad. Tuloy-tuloy yan. Yung plano ng Diyos kay Mary. 33 years. 33 years. If you guys are going through some things in your life, you may have to wait 33 years. At least. Pastor, that's a long time. I know. But when it does happen, you will say, wow, 
Tama mo pala ang Panginoon. All along. For my grandfather, he did not see the full fruition of his commitment to the Lord. When my father was about a toddler, no, a little bit older than that, like somewhere between nursery and kinder, my father was dying. So my grandfather brought my father here in Mandaluyong from Tanay. He wanted to bring him to uh, not so sure if GH bar or what. But my father was dying. In the middle of the rain, my father, grandfather knelt down in the middle of Mandaluyo and said, God, if, if you make this child live, he will serve you in this place with his life. Well, obviously, my father lived. But instead of staying here, he went to the States and started his life there. The transplant, that's a long time for a promise to happen. No? That was in the 40s when that promise happened. Huh? 50s, 60s, 1970, my parents came home as missionaries sa Pilipinas. Ulaan nyo where they lived. Here. Next door. At our house. Pastor, did your dad know that? No. The only reason why they started here was because my lolo and lola lived next door. The first ministry was started in Novaliches. IBC Novaliches. Actually, Novaliches Baptist Church. Then, started here. 1981, my grandfather passed away. But he never really got to see the college and the seminary building. That was his dream. But you follow it anyway. How I wish you would see our children serving the Lord. We're trying our best to keep following. I'm sure in heaven he has a nice view. But I'd like for him to see the earthly view. You follow and you keep and you keep and you keep. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 says, God does not waver between yes and no. I love how Paul, Paul says that. I'm just don't need a bago na isip. God does not waver between yes and no. Verse 20, for all of God's promises are yes and amen to His glory. Pastor, does that mean everything I claim is yes? No. Only His promises. If God gave you a promise about your life, your family, your job, your decisions, your calling, listen to it. Follow it. Keep it. One day. Pagtapos na lahat ng preparation. You'll see it. But pastor, I, ang hirap eh. I know. Keep it anyway. There's a, one day there was a man and he was really frustrated with everything going on in his life. And he began to question the Lord. Lord, ano ba? What, what are you doing? I'm having a hard time. And he began to, to enumerate all the stuff. Yung mga parabang pagkukulang ni Lord sa kanya. Lord, dapat ganito. Pero wala to, tapos ganito, tapos wala to. I just get one by one by one by one. Just named it after the other. And he, he runs into the verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 
verse 17 to 20. And so you know what he did? What he did is this. He, he began to make a pin. You know, pin on your shirt? Yes. Made a pin. And the pin was an acronym of a statement to himself. And the statement reads like this. Some of you know this because I love this, this, this statement here. That. He made a pin. Tapos yung pin ayan had this set of words or statements in it. it. To remind him that God was still doing things in his life. Some of you probably need to put that in a tarpaulin or in the modern times, tattoo it on your arm. I don't know. Whatever works for you. But it works like this. Please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. The pin said, please, ready? You were to follow me? So when I said, okay, so we're not, okay, ready? Please, let please, now you're going to say that to yourself, okay? Please, don't say that man to your wife who's probably angry at you right now. This is not an excuse. This is for you to say to yourself. Please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. Pasensya lang po. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa akin. Masarap sa Tagalog. Pasensya lang po. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa akin. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa akin. Pastor, paano pag gusto kong madaliin, pag minadali mo yan, ikaw ang tatapos niyan. If you hurry it, then you bear the burden of finishing that's not what God wants you to do. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. But you still have to put it on. Please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. Pasensya lang po. Pagpasensya nyo na. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa akin. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa akin. Dear Father, we come before you this morning. We praise you and we thank you that in the midst of so many things, from problems to just burdens, to blessings and promotions, you are not finished with us yet. Lord, if we will see your mission in our life, Kung makikita po namin, Panginoon, ang mission mo na mangyari sa buhay namin, kailangan namin makinig, kailangan namin sumunod, at kailangan namin bantayan at itago, Panginoon, ang iyong utos sa amin, Panginoon. Lahat ng bagay papakinggan namin. This world craves for our attention. Help us to focus our attention on you. In the middle of all this traffic, all this shopping, all the propagandas, everything, Lord, help us to focus on you. Help us to focus on you. Father, I pray that you would do that today. Teach us.
just to do that today. Would you stand with me this morning? I just want to ask you if you're here this morning and then you're trying to ask the Lord, Lord, ano mong gusto mong gawin sa buhay ko? You know, Lord, you're speaking to me about this area of my life. Maybe ba sa inyo, medyo sisira yung loob, no? Medyo discouraged ka ngayong umaga. Maybe ba sa inyo, you know, you, you suddenly have this opportunity, may pagkakataon, and you're trying to get the direction of the Lord. Mara ba sabi mo sa Panginoon, Lord Jesus, sa gitna ng taas o baba niyang lahat ng yan, ang gusto ko lang gawin ay sumunod sa'yo. Yan lang gusto ko gawin. Sumunod sa'yo. That's all I want to do. So if you're here today, if you're here today, and the Lord is speaking to your heart today, would you join me in prayer here at the altar this morning? Because I, we'd love to come and pray with you. Dito sa lugar natin sa IBC, maluwag na lugar to eh. This is a place where we can pray very easily. Okay? Okay. So, kung kailangan ka, usap ka po na pray, would you join us here? Say, Lord, ito po ako. Ito po yung situation ko. This is, this is where I am. Lord, would you lead me? Would you speak to me? Tell me, Lord, what do you want me to do? What, what do you want to know? Lord, lead this person or that person or this person. No, not them. You. You. Huwag mo ipanalangin yung mga makukulit sa buhay mo. Okay? Kasi piniyaga ng Panginoon na nandun yun eh. Mag-pray mo yung ikaw. Anong gustong gawin ng Diyos dyan sa buhay mo? Yun po yung mag-pray natin. Okay? Ang dami natin pasanin, daming kasiyahan, dami, patong-pato. From, from victories to failures, there's so many things real throughout our lives. Just ask the Lord, Lord, ano po yung gusto mo? Anong sinasabi mo sa akin? Anong dapat kong gawin? Maybe sa iba sa inyo, medyo basak na ng konti. Sabi mo, Lord, nahihirapan po ako. Hayaan mo hawakan ko yung pangako mo. Let me hold on to your promise. Let me be faithful to your promise. Let me hold on to what you want me to do. Would you do that this morning? Mahalig mong gayon mo yan ngayong umaga. Just seek the Lord for me. Pagkakasakan ka man, labit. Sa mama kami here in the front, so we can come together. If you're here this morning, you're saying, Pastor, you know, uh, naintindihan ko, I get it. But I want to hear from the Lord. It starts with, with this. It starts with a relationship with Christ. Oh, I'm not inviting you to be a member of the church or sumali sa church or palit ng religion to change your religion. I'm saying is, do you remember a time when you said to the Lord, Lord, without you, I am hopeless. Change my life. Baguhin mo po yung buhay ko. Baguhin mo po yung puso ko. Baguhin mo ako, Panginoon. It starts, starts with that. It starts with that. It begins with that. So if you're here this morning, sabi mo, Panginoon, in your prayer, Lord, change my heart. Change my life. Baguhin mo po ako, Panginoon. Natitiwala ako sa iyo, Panginoon. Ikaw lang makagawa niya sa akin. I believe in you. I trust in you, Lord. That you're the only one who could do this for me. I want to follow you, Lord. Gusto ko po sumunod sa iyo, Panginoon. Forgive me of my sins. Patawarin mo ko, Lord, sa aking mga kasalanan. Change my life. Heavenly Father, as your people are here this morning, I'm not going to be able to understand, Lord, lahat po ng pinagdadaanan nila. Hindi ko po yan lahat maintindihan. Hindi ko po lahat yan masasagot, Panginoon. Pero, Panginoon, Ikaw, alam mo, teach us, Father, to listen to You. Not to listen to everything else, but just You. Help us, Lord, to follow you. Ano yung pinapagawa mo sa amin, Panginoon? Sundin namin ito, Panginoon. And help us to keep your promise in our hearts. Dahil lahat ng pangako mo, Panginoon, ang sagot mo yung oo. All your promises, Lord, are yes. Amen.
You don't waver. You don't change your mind. It's yes. It may take some waiting, some following, some listening. But Lord, yes. And with that, Lord, we say yes. Thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you for your blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. to our offering this morning. If you're here this morning, kung kayo po and you are a visitor or a guest in our church, okay, we want to tell you that you're not a part of what we're doing today. Di po kayo kasala dito. As always, as we say every Sunday, okay, this is for the members and attenders of, of IBC. If you are a guest and a visitor, you've already given to us your greatest gift and that is your time. So salamat po sa inyo. Okay. To our um, uh, members and attenders, remember that we don't give. We bring. No? We bring our offerings. We bring our tithes to the Lord. We bring. Kasi kung, uh, kasi wala lang po tayo bibigay, kung di sila una magbigay. So we just bring the Lord's part. Okay? Dinadala lang natin yung part ng Panginoon. If you need an envelope to give this morning, kindly raise your hand. Okay? So we could give you one. As the ushers are going around. If you don't want to use one, okay lang that be just fine. But if you'd like to use an envelope to give this morning, would you raise your hand? Okay, so we can give you one. Right. Okay? Alright. If you're ready, let's all come together. Okay. Father, as your people come today, we praise you. And we thank you. I, I pray your blessings on them, Lord, as they're faithful to you. Thank you, Lord, for their sharing and bringing, Lord, their offerings today. Lord, you will use this offering to do what we need to do in this city and all over the world. So, God, I pray that you would bless all those who are giving this morning or bring their offerings this morning. May your name be praised. Give it back to them, Lord, in full measure, over and above, Lord, what they're giving today. Praise you and thank you for it all. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.